Welcome to Conversations That Matter, a policy-driven conversation with local leaders who have a major effect on the quality of life issues that affect all of us in Kern County. I'm your host, Michael Turnipseed, Executive Director of the Kern County Taxpayers Association. Our guest today is Brian Miller, Principal of the Regional Occupation Center and the Career Training Education Center of the Kern High School District. Welcome, Brian. Thank you for having me. So who is Brian Miller, and how did you come to oversee these two campuses of uh, career tra workforce training centers for the Kern High School District? Well, it, is, it has been a great journey. Um, I'm a Bakersfield native, went to West High, Bakersfield College, CSUB, uh, got into teaching in 2001, and uh, got my first administrative job was actually at the ROC campus um, as a dean of students out there for, for ROC and the Bakersfield Adult School. 12 years ago, um, and since that time, I've had the chance to, to progress through various administrative capacities and now the principal there, um, but also to kind of lead the charge in the growth that we've had um, in career technical education out at the, uh, at the ROC campus and now opening, starting the uh, CTEC campus as well. Um, and it's been, been amazing to watch um, how many more opportunities we've created and see all the great things that kids do every year. So what was really, the, your role in the transformation of and modernization at the Rock and the creation of CTEC. Yeah, so really um, taking going through the whole process, um, we we it, and it was quite a process um, from you know going out and and taking teams of people to visit model schools around the country so we could kind of bring back some of the best ideas back here. Um, to surveying our own students in the district to see what kinds of programs they wanted to uh, to do and, and what kind of programs they'd like to see expanded there. Um, and then to go through working with uh, industry partners and career technical education teachers um, to go through the design process of uh, all the new facilities that we have at ROC and also the CTEC campus there. Um, so that was kind of the process that we went through and then and then got to be a part of the um, the construction team as well and, and, and work with um, a couple different contractors that worked on the different projects um, and take that really from the ground floor to where we're at today to having a final product and students in classes. Um, so it really has been pretty amazing to, to be a, a, a close part of that entire process. So what exactly is the ROC? And it's been around for what, 30 years? Started in 1985, yes. Yeah. So we are the career training uh, school for the Kern High School District, so ROC and CTEC. Um, so students get to come and take a three hour a day class with us um, for the duration of the school year. It's part of their class schedule. They come either in the morning for three hours or an afternoon session for three hours, or we even run evening classes as well. Um, and so all of our, we have 38 different programs that students can take. It covers every single industry sector. Uh, and our teachers all come from industry as well, which makes it kind of a unique place. Um, and so they get to learn from people that were professionals in the industry. Um, all of our curriculum is aligned with our post-secondary partners like Bakersfield College and CSUB. So they get to start the pathway here and, uh, it, and, and continue that at, at post-secondary if that's what they want to do. Um, and then all of our industry partners really work very closely with our programs um, to guide our curriculum as well, but also to work with our students to provide things like we call work-based learning, um, like coming into the class, I know in our video production class, we've got lots of guest speakers that come in and talk about their careers. Um, we've got industry partners that host field trips for us. Um, and then we've got lots of industry partners that host internships as well. So we've got quite a few students that do that. Internships are a big thing. You have roughly 2,400 students mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, and a good portion of those. How many students actually have internships? So right now we've got a little over 650 students out doing an internship through our community classroom program at over 200 different businesses, which is pretty amazing when you look at... Um, that really shows the support that the business community has for the programs and the students at the uh, the ROC and the CTEC um, to open their doors and take in a student intern and help guide them and coach them up. 
Um, and it's a great opportunity for kids too because they, they get to take that knowledge that they learned in the classroom and then put that into play in a real world setting. So how do students, how does it work for them to decide, I want to do something at Tech or Rock, depending on where the classes are located? Yeah. How does that process work? Yeah, so we've got, uh, we've got four, uh, we call them our career techs, recruitment and career techs. And so one of their roles is to go out to the various campuses and talk to students about what we do at ROC and Tech, And, um, you know, trying to tell them about the, the types of opportunities that are here, the types of programs, what types of things they'd be learning, what the commitment is by students um, to take a program. And so they really are our um, vehicles to getting the information out to students and the community and parents. Um, they're at all the, the freshman registration nights right now talking to students so we can start talking to them early. Um, we do student tours here as well because we really want students to get a feel for here's what, here's what I'm signing up for. Um, and so that... Then, we, then during uh, November till uh, early March, students can go on and apply online, uh, juniors and seniors, uh, for a, whatever program they want to uh, take. And then, uh, and then right now, what's going on um, in, in April is the counselors are then selecting students from their school to take whatever programs that they signed up for. So they, each school site gets a, gets a couple of spots in each program. Um, all the programs are impacted, and so there is there is a waiting list. So the counselors have a, a difficult job of of looking through that list of students and, and selecting ones that uh, they think are going to be successful. So how many students are on the waiting list? You got twenty four hundred students here. Yeah. So we so for this school year we had twelve hundred students that were recommended by a counselor to, and put on a waiting list um, that did not get into a program. So. Um, you know, we're still short on, uh, on the number of, of opportunities we can hold for students. Um, so we're working to, you know, hopefully remedy that because that number is only going to get bigger this next school year. Uh, demand. The yeah, I mean, we had over, uh, over 5,000 applications for next school year and we've got 2,400 spots. So, uh, wow. yeah. That's really something to be yeah. proud of. Yeah. Let's take a short break. We have a message from Kern Tax coming forward. I'm Michael Turnipsey. For the past 18 years, the executive director of the Kern County Taxpayers Association. Local government agencies must be substantially transformed over the next generation to address the stiff headwinds of changing demographics, regulatory mandates, and structural economic inequalities on many levels. This transformation will require meaningful improvements in public sector productivity, integration of governmental functions, and innovations that produce performance advances that can only come through creative public-private partnerships. Aggressive advocacy from civic organizations like the Kern County Taxpayers Association will be essential for public officials to get and stay focused on these challenges. If you're interested in participating in this transfer transformation of our governmental systems, send me an email at kerntax at kerntaxpayers.org. Thank you for your time. Welcome back. Today's guest is Brian Miller, the principal of the Regional Occupation Center out on Mount Vernon Avenue, and the Career Training Education Center on Old River Road. What are some of the opportunities that students have at CTEC? We talked a little bit about the internship programs, mm -hmm. but how, how does that all work? I mean, you talked about we have 200 companies that are doing mm -hmm. it, and I guess that's been talked about a little bit, but what is the real value of an internship program for a high school kid to have when he gets out of high school with actual experience, how does that translate to having a positive benefit in, in their career if they want to go to work right away? Sure. So as far as the internship opportunity, um, yeah, I think the value is, is a couple things. It, you know, what you learn in, in a classroom setting is not always, uh, as, as we all know, not the reality of what it looks like on the job site. And um, and so the internship really provides that opportunity to learn in the, in the work world 
um, the day-to-day, -day, what that looks like and, and kind of connect some of those dots, um, utilizing those skills that they have learned in the classroom. The other benefit is the networking that they get to do as well, because when you're out there working at a business, you're meeting people and, and they know you're there as the intern and you're interested in maybe working there someday. Um, and a lot of our students get hired right out of those internship spots, especially the ones that are seniors um, as well. It's also something that they can put on their, uh, on their resume there. Um, but you also asked what are some of the opportunities here at the school? And um, you know, I mean, right now we're sitting in the video production studio We've got students here that are running the whole show. Our teacher's not even here today. She's on a field trip with the other half of the class. Um, and these students are doing a phenomenal job. But, but you know, they, the cameras can just see us too. But when you look around, this is a real studio. Our equipment is industry grade. We've got a control room next door. Um, and that's all very intentional because we want the labs at both the ROC and the CTEC to really look, feel, and function as much as possible, like that real world setting so that these students can get their hands on that and get a feel for what that looks like. And it's not just one cameraman. No. There's a team of four in yeah. here and there's another three yes, or four absolutely. in the Absolutely, it's awesome, room. it's awesome. It's, it's just like being at KGT or yes. any of the other stations, yep. KERO or KBAK. Yep, absolutely. Except their studios aren't this nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hear from Trihe about that. Uh, you probably should take that out, by the way. <laughs> we don't want to. So, when they complete the program, we talk about they've had doors opportunity in the soft training. Uh, do you hear any stories about placements and what kids and their success stories? And just because some kids get really some great jobs and do great things coming out of high school at 18. Yes. So you had some stories? To yeah, tell? absolutely. And um, that is the most rewarding part of my job is to, to see what these students end up doing. And, and every year there's hundreds of stories. Um, so I'll you know, share, share one or two with you. Um, thinking of a, a student um, who, uh, his name's Kevin, and, and he went through our robotics program probably, I think, five years ago. And, uh, and so Kevin went through that program his senior year. Um, and he, you know, just signed up for it because he was looking for something different to do. He, I think he went to Miramonte High School and um, was looking for a different class. And he liked to kind of tinker with electronics and stuff. And so he said, I'll try out the robotics class. And, uh, he, and he got in there and he really fell in love with it. And uh, one of the the things with our robotics program, like most of our programs are very closely aligned with Bakersfield College. Um, as the full pathway. Um, and so Kevin uh, had a lot of interactions with Bakersfield College staff as well through that program. Um, the, he went through the dual enrollment part of there, and so that got him another connection up to uh, Bakersfield College and the industrial automation bachelor's degree program that they have up there. Uh, so when Kevin uh, got towards the end of his senior year, he, he knew, hey, I'm going up to, to BC. I want to get into the industrial automation program. Um, and so he did that, and, uh, and he, he told me that it was a very seamless transition because he'd already done the, a lot of the in, entry-level coursework. He knew the professors. Um, he got through that bachelor's program in four years, um, so he graduated just, just last year with his bachelor's in industrial automation uh, in, in May, and over the summer, he got hired with uh, Grimway Farms as an um, industrial automation controls technician, which is a, a very high level job. Grimway only has about four of those people in the company um, and Kevin is one of them. And he's probably 21, 22 years old. Um, and he really got on that path because of his experience in that ROC class. Um, so that's, that's one great example. Um, I'll share one more short one. Um, that's kind of a different thing, but is very true of many of the students. And this was a gal who was in our video production class just just last year, and uh, she had a rich. She was a, she was, was her senior year, and uh, she originally had signed up for the law enforcement program, um, and uh, and she thought that's maybe what she wanted to do. And and so the first day of class, the instructor's going through. All the, you know, here's what we do in here. Here's the, here's what you got to do. And, and they talked all about the physical fitness aspect of the class. And she said, ah, I'm not, that's not for me. Um, but she had walked by on her way to the law enforcement class, the video production class, looked in there and saw how cool it looked and said, oh, I like to take pictures. Maybe I'll try that out. So we switched her in here. 
And, uh, and she really fell in love with just the video production world and like shooting videos and photos and the editing um, and had a great mentor in Mrs. Kirch, who's our teacher here, and, uh, and really got exposed to a lot of people from industry because Mrs. Kirch brings in a lot of people to talk to about the different career paths. And at some point in, in, during her senior year in the second semester, she made the decision that, hey, I'm going to give this a shot. I really like the news aspect. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to try and try and get into the news business. And uh, and she says as soon as she graduated, started applying for jobs. And over the summer, she landed a job with KBAK as a news director, not an entry level job. Um, so she's a news director for them and just just really pretty awesome story. Um, that I think is very true of many of our students here. Most, most students in high school, they don't know kind of what they want to do, but they get in here and they kind of get a good taste for it. Um, and it helps them figure out if they want to do it and where they want to go. Or a lot of them also learn, I don't want to go down that path. I'm going to take a different path, which is just as valuable. I remember when I toured Rock probably seven, eight years ago, the diesel mechanics program in their mm -hmm. relationship with the John Deere yep. company. Yep. And kids were getting out of the program and John Deere had slots for them at different places yep. all around the country. And they still do that. They and still it, it's like you finish graduate on Friday, you're on Yep. You go to Iowa or Illinois or wherever yep. they send you and you have a job, they help you relocate, they do all these things yep. and yeah, it's they a great they have opportunity. Yes, John Deere and Caterpillar have both figured out that's a great place to recruit students, um, and uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So those kind of relationships between your instructors who spent thirty years working in the industry and could leverage that and bring it in the classroom is a real benefit for all of the yes. students who take that program, or at least the ones who are the shining stars. <laughs> yeah, and, and most of them are. I mean, these students here, um, you know, they, they, are, they are committed to what they're doing. They're very interested in the field. They're making a commitment themselves because they're giving up time on their homeschool campus with, you know, with that um, environment and coming here. Um, and so they, they really are dedicated. And uh, I think that shows, um, and, and especially the focus that we have on just the career readiness skills here employability skills, um, you know, the students really buy into that. And I think the employers see that as well. Over the last seven years, there's been a lot of changes in education, especially in career education here. And now you have dual enrollment. So you're mm -hmm. not just getting job training and those kind of skills. And how does that mix with the dual enrollment? You mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. So you're getting college credit for some of this work when you go to BC, mm -hmm. which enables you to explain that to people who are watching. Yeah, I think, so there's a lot of value in the, uh, in, in dual enrollment, um, you know, starting that, that college path while you're in high school, getting a taste of that. I think for a lot of reasons. One, um, it, it gives students the confidence. A lot of students don't have a thought, I don't want to go to college, um, and, and or don't think they can do that or don't think they need to do that. Um, but they go through that dual enrollment class and figure, okay, yeah, I can do this this level of coursework, um, and maybe this is something that, that I want to do. Um, it also gives them a connection to that, uh, to that university and saves them some time, saves them some money um, as well. So I, we do try to find as many opportunities as we can um, in all of our programs to provide you know, that, that opportunity to earn the college credit because I think it helps strengthen that pathway. It's not in every program. Um, sometimes it doesn't line up. You know, maybe the college doesn't have a program that's similar to what we do um, in, in certain programs, but, uh, but we do try to do that as much as possible. Well, let's take another short break and we'll be back for, we'll have a short message from Current Tax. Hello, I'm Kristen Dowd, and I serve on the Kern Tax Board of Directors. Kern Tax engages in complex regulatory issues such as utilities and other matters that are of great importance to our community and the businesses that exist here in Kern County. Welcome back. I have a couple more questions for Brian Miller, principal of the ROC and CTEC campuses of the Kern High School District. Uh, both campus, campuses are gen, generally fabulous and state-of-the-art, yeah. and it's really, they've been, the upgrades. 
tell the audience you've been around for 12 years, the transformation that's occurred, and how much work it came in. Actually, C-Tech is new and state-of-the-art, as you mentioned. How it happens, because obviously with the demand, there's probably going to be another C-Tech sooner or later and how that process works and how long it took you from start to end the process to get a, camp, a campus like this built. Okay, so yeah, so, so and it was quite a process. Um, you know, there was a big master plan put together um, to, to, that we were gonna execute and, and wanted, because we knew this was kind of one shot and wanted to get it right. Um, and so we, there were several things, um, you know, it really started with surveying the students in the district. And um, we did a survey um, that we got 22,000 responses and uh, asked them all kinds of things around career technical education. Uh, and, you know, just would you wanna take a, a three hour block class at another campus? And then we asked them, well, what type of program would you like? And they could check, there was like 50 different choices there. Um, that was one piece of data that we used. We also looked at labor market data because we wanted to see, make sure that where we were expanding and growing, we're gonna be in some of the areas where we have local needs as well. Um, and then, then we put together um, some stakeholder teams and, uh, and, and took them on some, some trips out to see some, some pretty awesome school districts in other states um, that were doing some similar work to us. And, uh, and really, that, that was a great experience. We learned, we met some great people along the way and that really opened their doors to us and, and uh, shared some of the things that they're doing. And especially in the Phoenix area was really some great districts there and some great people. And we brought back all those ideas. Um, and then we started working with individual groups of industry partners to kind of share some of those ideas that we had and then get their feedback on, on what they thought would be important there. Um, and so that all got rolled up and became a part of the design process. And so that's when we started working with an architect to design um, what the facility could look like. Um, and then we knew we'd need to fund this as well. And so in 2016, um, went out for a bond and, uh, and, and were successful in getting that in the fall of 2016. And, and the big ticket items on that bond were to um, build the the CTEC campus um, and also to uh, to expand and enhance the ROC campus and uh, in that uh, pretty high bond passage rate um, at the time and but but we leading up to that we really wanted to educate the community on here's what we're doing and why we why we need this money and what we want to do with it um, and and now we're here today you know seven years later and and it's awesome to be sitting here in CTEC and see the results of all that work. And, and you just see how that plan came together, the support that the community had, and, uh, and, and the community has been, it's, it, it is amazing how many people have come through this building in the last couple of years and continue to want to do that. Um, and just it's just going to continue to grow because it is a great form of education um, that gets good results. You have, I think, 38 programs now. Mm -hmm. What's next on the list? What programs are you looking at that you don't have today? Okay, great question. So there's there's a couple of things um, that we're looking at right now. I'd say two main ones. Um, one is we're looking at the behavior health world and the mental health world. We don't really have a program that solely kind of focuses on that career path. Uh, we have some of that embedded into like our Intro to Health Careers program, but you know, with, with that, we really feel like that, that lends itself to being an actual career path program. There's so many different job opportunities, um, and there's a huge demand. I mean, a huge demand out there. Um, so that's one area that we're looking at um, developing. Um, and the other one is really around energy. And, and as we know, our, our economy is an energy-focused economy. Um, and we're going through a transition here in, in uh, you know, in, in what type of energy forms we're going to be um, providing to the community. And we, Kern County wants to be the leader in the new energy. So we're paying very close attention to what that is, whether it's something like carbon capture, requestation, or, or some other form of, uh, of clean energy. Um, 
and, and paying close attention and working with the right people to figure out, well, what are the jobs and the skill sets going to be needed to support that next energy industry that's coming? Um, because I see us having a program that's going to make sure to, uh, to train students around that. So I, I think it's pretty safe to say there's a great economic benefit to the local Kern County economy with what you're doing here. Absolutely. As, do you really quantify that? You know, you've had so many kids go through the program in the last five years or seven years, and do you track the kids to see how many are actually working in their careers yeah. and how many people? Because obviously, as you said, mental health is a gigantic need. Yep. We need people who will get on the ground that can deal yes. with people who have the serious challenges. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Um, there is a huge value in our community by having um, the ROC and the CTEC centers. I mean, it, these students are going out and they're really getting focused on their um, on, on the next step after high school. Um, you know, we do a follow up study every year. Uh, we're, we, we have to wait until six months after they graduate. And so, um, you know, usually in the late fall time around November, we start working on that. And uh, we have to reach out to all the students that graduated a program the, and, and were seniors the, the previous school year. And we ask them, basically ask them three questions. We ask them, uh, you know, are you employed? Um, are you going to post-secondary education or are you in the military? And looking at last school year's students, 2022, um, you know, those students, 67% of them are in post-secondary education. 55% of them are in, uh, um, uh, in employed, full-time employment. And, uh, and then 4% of them are in the military. And they could be doing both. You could be check the post-secondary box and the workforce box. Um, but that's, that's, that are, those are good results. I mean, the, just the post-secondary, that's over 20 percentage points higher than the rest of the, the entire district as far as that are going on and continue their education. Um, but that's all intentional because we really talk to the students about when they leave us, we want them to know, A, do you want to go down this career path? Because you might have changed your mind, which is fine. Um, and if you do want to go down the career path, what what job are you going after right now? And what's that level of additional training that you're going to need to be successful in that? And I think we do a pretty good job of getting them prepared for that next step after high school um, so that they're well prepared to be successful. And, and you know, you, going back to your question about the economic value of that, the more people that we can put out into the community, that are going to be employed successfully in good paying jobs, the better this, this economy is going to be. Well, thank you very much, Brian Miller. Thanks for having me. For participating in today's conversation that matters. Kern Tax also wants to thank uh, the Kern High School CTEC class, the video production class here at CTEC, the students, Mrs. Kirch, for the great job that they do. We also want to thank you for listening today, watching the show today. And if you have any questions or input you'd like to give us, you can email us at currenttax at currenttaxpayers.org or visit our website, www.currenttaxpayers.org. Uh, thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.